doesn't it seem like there is never ending innovation in the world of vehicles these days? And I, for one, am all for it. Whether it's under the hood, in the seats, or in the wheels, I absolutely love anything that has to do with automotive innovation. But what if that innovation could also save lives? Yep. That's exactly what we're talking about today. Hi, I'm Amelia Dalton, host of Chalk Talk. Worldwide regulation and legislation is driving a demand for automotive in-cabin monitoring systems. In this episode of Chalk Talk, Michael Thomas from Infineon and I investigate how short-range radar can be utilized for a variety of in-cabin monitoring systems. We also examine the implementation of these different systems and how Infineon's low-cost and low-power radar solutions could make our vehicles safer than ever before. And before we get started, don't forget to click that link. There you can find even more information about this topic from Infineon. Hi, Michael. Thank you so much for joining me. Hey, you're welcome. Very nice to be here. Excellent. Okay, so we're talking about using automotive short-range radar for in-cabin monitoring systems today. But Michael, before we get started, what all will we be covering today? Today in my agenda, what I have, I want to talk about technologies and regulations that are leading to the use of radar for in-cabin monitoring systems And then I will talk about radar solutions from Infineon Technologies. And then I'm going to give an overview of in-cabin monitoring systems. And last, I will talk about our design partner for our in-cabin monitoring systems. So before we dig into the details, let's talk about the motivation to create this 60 gigahertz radar for ICMS. What problems is it looking to help solve? Okay, so the in-cabin monitoring system is largely being requested by either NCAP within Asia and Europe or also by NHTSA within North America to prevent the harm or deaths that could come to children from being left behind in a vehicle. And so the primary focus of this system is for child presence detection, to physically detect the presence of a child that's left behind in a vehicle or that a child has inadvertently entered a vehicle and become trapped within that vehicle. There's been at least 8,000 children that have been left behind in the vehicles between 1990 and 2020. And out of this, there's been 990 deaths associated to this and 1,200 children have been injured due to hypothermia that can happen when a child is trapped within a vehicle and the temperatures rapidly rise. And because of this, there are legislations that are happening and the NCAP within Europe are looking for life presence detection. And then in 2025, they will be looking for systems that physically can distinguish that a child is left behind in the vehicle. The OEMs have made an agreement that in 2025, they will start adopting many of these systems along with the child presence detection. Many people are saying, okay, I already have to spend the money for a radar system to detect that a child's left in the vehicle, but what else can I do with this? And one of the other features is um, seat occupancy detection. So using the radar, we can physically detect the location of a person within the vehicle as well. Today, a lot of the vehicles have pressure sensors within seats to detect a person is in the seat or not in the seat. And then there's associated wiring harness and everything to go with this. And so this is an an additional cost to the vehicle. And this could be conceivably taken out by the use of detecting the physical location of an adult or an inanimate object within the vehicle. 
Another feature is that this can be used for intrusion detection as well to detect that someone is entering the confines of the vehicle and this can then set off an alert that the vehicle has been violated or someone's physically entering into that vehicle. So, Michael, this kind of legislation and regulation has been around for a while, right? If we look at different safety systems within vehicles, we have seatbelt reminders that have been around since 2020, driver monitoring systems, again, depending on the region, around from 2020 or 2022. And then the child presence detection in Europe starting in 2023, this will be an NCAP requirement within Europe. And we foresee this also coming to the U.S. And this is going to be driven by the U.S. Department of Transportation. This is from a legislation going through Congress right now called the Hot Car Act. And then OEMs are are making formal commitments to have such systems within vehicles by the year 2025. Excellent. Now, Michael, what kind of benefits are we looking at when it comes to Infineon's radar portfolio? Okay, so Infineon, this radar is not new to us. We have been a market leader in the 77 gigahertz automotive radar where we have a market share of greater than 70%, and we've sold over 400 million pieces worldwide. Also, the 60 gigahertz radar, we first came out with this in the consumer market, and we've sold over 14 million pieces of our BGT60 TR13C, which is an antenna and package radar, and... This can be found in products with Samsung Smart TV, the Google Pixel phone, Nest Hubs, and thermostats. And also, we were the first company globally to come out with antenna and package for 60 gigahertz radar. So taking all of this know-how and knowledge and proven success, we are coming out with two chips, which is the BGT60 ATR24AIP, and then also the BGT60 ATR24C. So the AIP, this just stands for antenna in package. Um, Both of these devices, they are going to be AEC Q100 grade two, and the BGT60 ATR24C is already in production. We find this to be a very flexible solution driven by the market trends for this application. What we are showing here is that we've sold over 500 million radar systems and we're the number one leader in 24 gigahertz blindside detection radar. And then we're also first in the market with antenna and package solutions. So what we are offering is a scalable solution between our radar transceivers and our Oryx microprocessor, which is a multi-core processor for real-time processing that is an ACIL-D safety integrity level device within the automotive segment. So you mentioned a modular approach earlier. Can you explain that aspect of this solution a bit more? Yeah, sure. So what we have is when we talk about modular is one, we have our radar transceiver and then two, our microcontroller unit or MCU. We have for our customers to evaluate. There's a number of, let's say, evaluation boards that they can work with. We have a very small MCU7 radar baseboard that we can attach RF shields to. And the RF shields are RF boards where we have our radar transceiver and for the part our BGT60 ATR24C this uses external patch antennas and so we have a number of various patch antennas that our customers can evaluate quickly without 
going into designing their own patch antenna arrays and building this and then testing. So these are quick and easy boards that can basically plug right into our radar baseboard and you can start evaluating right away. Secondly, we have our Oryx radar baseboard. This is using our Oryx TC356TA. And again, this has the same modular concept that I can plug in our RF shield boards onto this and start evaluating. The nice thing about our Oryx radar baseboard is that this can also be used to run an embedded application on. As opposed to our MCU-7, this really is just streaming the raw data from our radar transceiver to a USB to the PC where then the signals can be processed within a GUI on the PC or via some MATLAB or Python scripts. Excellent. Okay, so Michael, can we examine the different kinds of monitoring systems that are included in ICMS? The driving force behind this is one, the child presence detection. In the very simplest form of this would be life presence detection. And life presence detection is just, is there a physical life there? And then the child presence is being able to distinguish that it really is a child. And the next would be seat occupancy detection to detect is there a person or a number of people in the vehicle and where are they physically located within the vehicle. Then the intrusion detection is to detect that somebody is physically entering the confines of the vehicle. And then proximity is more of a mechanism to detect that someone is very close to the external perimeter of the vehicle and we can then alert or provide an alert in that event. Okay, so Michael, let's talk about that first one you mentioned, life presence detection. We are detecting that there is a human inside of the vehicle. And we're not classifying that human other than it is a human being and we don't know if it's an adult or a child. So this is being requested by the Euro NCAP for vehicles in 2023. But moving forward in 2025, the Euro NCAP will then require child presence detection or CPD. The real driving reason for this is to make sure that one, no one is left behind in a vehicle. And if so, then an alarm can be raised. You could use the system to adjust lighting, music, or you could also turn these systems on if a person enters a vehicle. So what about child presence detection? What's all included with this system? With this system, we are able to discriminate, is this an adult or is this a child? And this is the ultimate goal for these applications is to provide information about the child within the vehicle and provide a classification. Is this an adult? Is there a child? And also to have a very high accuracy about this. And we, with our system today, for the child presence detection, we have an accuracy that's above 99%. And this is just using one single radar sensor. And this is with our antenna and package solution for a five-seater vehicle. This has also been extensively tested. There's over 300 NCAP requirements that we've tested this with, and it's extremely robust against non-living objects such as water bottles or other things within the vehicle. This is based on requirements from our OEMs and Tier 1s for these systems within vehicles. Right here, what I'm showing in the overhead compartment near the rear view mirror is where we would mount our 60 gigahertz radar sensor. 
And this is covering the complete cabin within a five-seater vehicle. And not only are we covering the seat location, so we indicate S1L is the driver's seat or S1R is the passenger seat. You know, of course, those can vary depending on which country you're in. But S2L, S2C, these are the rear seating locations. And then the red areas, these are the footwell locations. So, hey, what happens if the child gets out of the seat and they get into the footwell? Are you able to detect it there? And, And yes, we are. The other thing is within North America, according to the FCC, there is a waiver, which is the 15.2. 5 waiver that requires uh, a 10% duty cycle over a 33 millisecond period, and we are completely FCC compliant. Our solution is extremely low power. This product, it came from our consumer products that were in mobile phone applications, and everyone knows that integrated circuits used in a mobile phone need to be extremely low power to obtain a long battery life and usage of the device. And and our solution is just that. It, It is a very low power solution. And along with being very low power, we're extremely thermally efficient. So there is no need to add external heat sinks for thermal management or anything like this to increase the cost of the end solution. We're extremely accurate when we come to the classification between a child and an adult. And for the Euro NCAP, the requirement is to detect that a child is left behind in the vehicle within 10 seconds and our system it typically happens in seven seconds or less. That's great. Now Michael can you explain the seat occupancy detection as well? What are we looking at here? A lot of people are saying okay you know I I realize I have a need for in-cabin monitoring system and they're saying what else can I do with this and The seat occupancy detection is the next logical solution or let's say feature that you can have with an in-cabin monitoring system using 60 gigahertz radar. And so this allows us to physically detect where a person is located within the vehicle. And this could be as few as one up to five people within a five-seater vehicle. So you also mentioned intrusion alert. This aspect is really interesting to me. Yeah, so the intrusion alert, when would you use it? And the intrusion alert is typically when the vehicle's in a key off condition, you're parked. And so therefore, in a key off condition, you need to have a solution that's running on very low power. And that's exactly where our solution fits in. Um, We are a very low power solution. We're targeting powers of average powers of 100 milliwatts or less for the intrusion alert mode of our solution. You know, if I have a vehicle and maybe I left my window open and I have a valuable item, maybe it's a briefcase, a purse, I can literally detect the moment a person's hand is reaching into the plane of the window would be. And so this can be detected. It can be used to set off an alert to hopefully deter the person trying to break in or enter the confines of the vehicle. What we are showing here is these red rectangles are areas that we call the perimeter of the vehicle. And within our software right now, that in the event the vehicle, we detect what we call intrusion detection, there would just be an icon that shows up. And this could be on an app on a phone or, or some mobile device to show you, hey, someone has broken into the confines of the vehicle. I see. Now, Michael, the last system you mentioned was proximity alert. Can you give me some details about that one as well? Yeah, so what we do is we're monitoring an area external to the vehicle from the front windshield to the rear window and roughly out one meter from the sides of the vehicle. 
if someone is within this area, it can set an alert and the OEMs can decide how they want to use this. Maybe this can be used to turn on a camera system, but this is also very robust that if someone is shaking or trying to break in, this would also be detected and it could be then used to also enhance the alarm system of the vehicle. And here we're just showing what the area for the proximity alert would be external to the vehicle. Okay. So, Michael, are there any designs currently on the market that are utilizing Infineon's radar mimics and MCU solutions? We are the market leader in 77 gigahertz and 24 gigahertz automotive radar. Our 60 gigahertz radar is used in a number of consumer products. For our 60 gigahertz automotive radar, we are currently engaged with a number of OEMs and tier one suppliers to design our 60 gigahertz uh, radar for the ICMS application. And then there is also one tier one supplier who's providing production systems today that's using our 24 gigahertz radar for the in-cabin monitoring system. Excellent. Well, Michael, I think that's all I have time for today. Thank you so much for joining me. Well, thank you very much. It's been my pleasure. It was very nice to talk with you. And before we go, you didn't forget to click that link, did you? There you can find even more information about this topic from Infineon. For Chalk Talks, I'm Amelia Dalton from eejournal.com. For more Chalk Talks, head on over to the Chalk Talks section at EE Journal. You can't miss it, it's right across the top. Or head on over to YouTube, youtube.com slash eejournal.